We're going to do a walkthrough on the Glutec SA1420 SPL. This machine has been designed for customers which are manually gluing or using a silkscreen process to apply glue to the bottom sheet. On the end feed end of the machine, they have the bottom sheet feed tray. The bottom sheet feed tray has got guides on each side to align the bottom sheet. It's going to be really important to make sure that all the paper is cut uniformly on the width to make sure that the paper aligns correctly. You have a blue button located here. This is an emergency stop reset button. If you ever stop the machine with the emergency stop switch and the touch screen says that it's an emergency stop, you're going to have to reset the emergency stop button and then push the blue button to re-energize the circuit. Moving from the bottom sheet feed tray, you got the vacuum conveyor located right here. And on the vacuum conveyor, you have two fans at the end feed end of the conveyor, which are going to be on 100% of the time. As you advance the bottom sheet into the machine, those fans are going to grip the sheet and pull the sheet along the vacuum conveyor. As the bottom sheet goes in the machine, there's four additional fans further towards the delivery of the machine and those are controlled with a speed control located on the touch screen right here. And you can increase or decrease the amount of suction that's pulling down on the paper against the conveyor belts. Above the vacuum conveyor, there's the top sheet feed tray. The top feed, uh, sheet feed tray has a side guide to align the edge of the paper. Further towards the delivery, there's a support tray for the top sheets. This is just to set them on when you're running the machine. And then towards the end of the machine, there's the delivery tray, which is going to collect the glued sheets. There's also an emergency stop button located here. And if you ever have the need to stop the machine immediately, you can just hit that button and it'll stop the machine instantaneously. There are a pair of sensors for the top sheet and a pair of sensors for the bottom sheet that tell the machine when both sheets are in position and when they can activate the, the system to pull them both through the machine. So when the top sheet is positioned up against the head stops and the side guide, you should see that the sensor on the delivery end of the machine is actually covered by the paper and the sensor on the end feed end of the machine is not covered by the paper. Now there's another set of sensors exactly like this for the bottom sheet on the vacuum conveyor and they have to be set for whatever the paper length is so that both of them are blocked on the delivery side sensor and open on the end feed side sensor for the machine to activate. If you ever have a question about the top and bottom sensors detecting the paper correctly, there's a display in the lower left hand corner of the touchscreen. Both of the uh, displays for the sensors will be dimmed out and as paper crosses the sensors you'll see the lights illuminate and when the paper is in the correct position for the top and the bottom sheet the left sensor will be illuminated and the right sensor will be off. That shows that both sheets are in the, cor in the correct position for the machine to cycle. I removed the top sheet support tray so you can see into the headstop pinch roller area of the machine. And the important parts here are the pinch rollers which are going to come down and grip the two sheets to drive them uh, into the squeeze rollers of the machine. There's a series of stainless steel fingers here which are the headstops. And then further uh, towards the delivery is the squeeze rollers which squeeze the two sheets together before the sheets are ejected into the delivery. Now normally while the machine is running this process is all done automatically when the tail edge of the top and bottom sheet are detected in the correct position by the sensors. But right now I'm going to do this manually using a series of controls which are available on the touch screen. So I'm going to hit the pinch button and that's going to bring the pinch roller down, gripping the top and the bottom sheets at the head stops. I'm going to press the head stop button and that's going to lower the stainless steel fingers. Then I'm going to hit the motor button and that's going to drive the sheet through the delivery end of the machine.
Now during normal operation, that whole process is automatic. You don't have to push the buttons to do that. As it detects the top and the bottom sheet in their correct position, it automatically cycles them through the machine. Okay, the squeeze roller assembly is right here. Uh, this assembly can be removed from the machine so it can be cleaned, scrubbed down with warm water. Uh, there's an adjustment to uh, control the gap between the upper and lower squeeze rollers and you'll see a lever on each end of the assembly here. There's also a set screw hole in the center on each um, block on the end of the assembly. By loosening up the brass tip set screw in the center, you can adjust this eccentric to bring the rollers closer together or further apart. If you have the levers, <coughs> excuse me, as far as they'll go towards the, the, the end feet end of the machine, that's the most open. If you move the levers as far as they'll go to the delivery end of the machine, that's the most closed. To remove the squeeze roller assembly, there's a couple of thumb knobs. They just get pulled out here. And this assembly will lift up out of the machine, like so. Again, this will be cleaned. To, to put it back in the machine, it has to go into an angle to hook the gear on the non-operator side uh, into the machine. And once the gear has been hooked over into the non-operator side, the assembly just drops back down into the machine, and then the thumb knobs are put back into position. If you ever break an electrical interlock on a guard or hit the emergency stop switch, you'll see the emergency stop light uh, display flashing. And to clear that out before you can restart the machine, you need to press the 22 millimeter blue emergency stop reset button. Okay, at the top left hand corner of the display, you've got your start and your stop buttons. If you hit the start button, the machine's gonna start running. It's gonna continue to run until you hit the stop button. Once you hit the stop button, there's gonna be a slight delay before the machine actually stops, and that's to allow the sheets to get completely into the delivery tray before the machine shuts down. You have a run mode section on the machine here, and on the SPL version of this machine, you're always gonna wanna run that in mode A. There are additional modes available, but those are made for the machine that's got the automatic bottom sheet feeder. If you look below, the mode section of the machine, you'll see the paper sensors. And these are the sensors which are detecting the position of the tail edge of the top and the bottom sheets. So if you look at each display for the top sheet or the bottom sheet, when the machine's gonna cycle, the left display will be illuminated green and the right display will be out. Moving to the right of the paper sensors, you're gonna see feeder test. On this machine, the feeder test does not work because this machine does not have an automatic bottom sheet feeder. If you move to the right of the feeder test, you're going to see the fan speed. Now the fans on the vacuum conveyor, the two on the end feed end of the conveyor are always going to be on at 100%. The other two fans which are towards the delivery end of the vacuum conveyor are controlled with a speed control. The normal default setting for the fan speed when running uncoated cardstock is 60%, and this will adjust in 10% increments. If you're running UV coated, coated, or laminated sheets where the lamination or coating is against the belts on the vacuum conveyor, this may need to be decreased, in some cases down to around 20. If the paper is thinner, it'll have to be decreased and that's to make it so there's not so much drive on the bottom sheet that'll literally crumple it up against the headstop fingers. If you're running very heavy paper or you're running paper that's got laser die cutting on it or something where the air can travel through the paper, this value may need to be increased slightly. Uh, the whole goal of the fan speed is to give you good control of the bottom sheet. It's just being brought up to the headstop and firmly holding it against the head stops until the machine cycles the sheets through the machine without buckling the sheet. We manually showed how the sheet could be um, cycled through the machine once they were at the head stop. 
and we use the pinch, which is the pinch roller button, the HS, which is the headstop button, and the motor button, which drives the paper out of the machine. So this allows you to have manual control over that paper cycle system on the machine. Once those are turned on, they're gonna to continue to be in the on position until you hit the button again and turn each one of them off. And whenever you're gonna run sheets automatically through the machine, they should always start out off. The cleanup buttons here, again, those don't function on the machine because there is no glue pump on this machine. If you look up at the top center, you're gonna see a machine status. That's going to tell you what's going on with the machine. You've got a diagnostic block. Again, there's information that will come up there if there's something wrong with the machine. If you look over to the right of those, you'll see the glue drive. The glue drive is actually connected to the drive for the vacuum conveyor. So whenever the vacuum conveyor is running, the glue drive will be on. Uh, if the glue drive is off, for this machine, it means that the vacuum conveyor belts are not turning. The glue pump, again, does not function on this machine because there is not a glue pump on the machine. Moving to the right, it says paper length. The paper length is entered into the machine in inches, and the paper length, what that does, it makes it so that the uh, pinch rollers will stay in contact to the paper for the correct length to get it to exit the machine depending on what the sheet length happens to be. Below that, you'll see a batch. This machine can batch count. Uh, to the right of that, there's a consecutive totalizer on both the batch or the count. Uh, you can clear them or reset them. And if you do that, the, the uh, verification will come up before it'll let, actually let you um, wipe out the count that's in the machine. If you have a count in the machine and you turn the machine off and then you come back the next day and turn the machine on, the count will be stored in the machine. The display down below is to set batch size. Again, a lot of these controls will be explained in the manual. Uh, the manual for this machine is the manual for the semi-automatic machine with the feeder, but the functions for the counter uh, work exactly the same. On the far right hand side, you've got a sheets per hour display. On this particular machine, this doesn't really matter. You can have it set at 700 sheets per hour or 1500 sheets per hour because the only thing that's gonna cycle it is when the machine actually sees the top and the bottom sheet in the correct position with the tail sensors. Uh, below that, you're gonna see your software versions. Uh, there's some factory defaults uh, for password protected information in the machine. And then there's also a series of videos which are stored in the machine. Again, this is a summary automatic version of the machine, so part of this information will be applicable to this machine and part of it will not. Uh, there is no special shutdown on the control. Uh, when you come in in the morning, you just turn it on, everything will boot up. At the end of the day, when you're finished running and you've got the machine um, cleaned up and squared away for the next day. You just turn the main power switch off and you're done. 